Welcome back to Summit, everybody. My name is Mark. We're taking a look at the fifth Sunday of Easter. What's the dumbest or craziest or most insane thing you've ever done out of love? And I don't just mean romantic love, you know, for that special guy, that special girl. I mean, the craziest thing you've ever done out of a sense of a loving relationship. You know, maybe you did something that was really embarrassing out of the love you have for your mom or your dad or something really, really embarrassing, just outlandish, insane because of the love you have for a friend or a sibling. I think of the, the things that I've done in the name of parenthood because I love my kids more than anything on the planet outside of my wife. The crazy things that you do for love and you'll be propelled by love, you'll be motivated by love. The, the, the things that I've done because I love my wife are things that I would... <laughs> That I'm most embarrassed to say out loud. So I'm not going to here. So stop. But that's what love does. Love gets you to put up with things you wouldn't otherwise put up with, to try things you otherwise never would. Love gets you to do things so out of your character, out of your personality, out of it even seems your ability sometimes because you just love, because it's consuming. It's all consuming mind, body, heart, soul. It's just consuming. And you just want to bring joy or peace or fulfillment, whatever, to that other. And that's what you see in these readings this week. You listen to this first reading. Paul and Barnabas are going through it, y'all. It's in the Acts of the Apostles, it's chapter 14. Paul and Barnabas, they have the whole town basically revolt against them. What are they trying to do? They're trying to share love. They're trying to share truth. They're trying to share goodness. They're trying to share beauty. They're trying to share the story of Jesus Christ. And it upsets so many people that all of a sudden now they're going to start to come out against them, right? And this is really, really difficult because as they're traveling and all the persecutions and all the ups and the downs, this is really hard for them. But because you know, they have to, it's, it's necessary we go through the hardships to enter the kingdom, it says. It is necessary that we undergo hardships to enter the kingdom. What a great lesson for all of us modern believers and Christians, even 2,000 years later. When you're having a really bad day, oh, God doesn't love me. Really? You're having a bad week. Oh, man, God, where are you? Really? Struggles are part of it. Hardships are part of it. If we want a faith with no hardship, with no struggle, then we pick the wrong faith because our symbol is a cross. I mean, at that point, we have to ask ourselves, what did I think I was signing up for? What did I think I was getting into? Just because we follow Jesus doesn't mean life's going to be easy. Now, he promises not to abandon us. He promises to, to leave us the church, which is there for us, his blessed mother, who's always there for us. The sacraments, his lifeblood, his grace, his body and blood, all these things are there for us to do what? To help us in the midst of the struggle. And this is why we can look at the sponsorial psalm and we can still praise. When you hear those words in the psalm, yes, we'll praise. Why? Because even in the midst of hardship, in the midst of the storms, God's still there. That's where we're celebrating the second reading, this vision of St. John from Revelation. Christ is the groom and he's coming back to save his bride. That Christ does not leave us abandoned. He's here to glorify God, but he knows that if we can remain steadfast, if we focused on him, that we bring glory to God. That's what the gospel is talking about. That when you follow Christ, you glorify God. When you follow his example of love, you glorify God. Love and truth in all circumstances. It will require sacrifice, yes. It'll be hard some days, yes. But when you do so, you bring glory to God and you turn others to him. That's what it's about. You don't do certain actions to get praise or to get affirmation or to get something back. That's not love. Love is self-sacrifice. Love is selflessness. We serve others because we will he love them, not because we want the praise or we want to get to receive affection or anything else in return. We, we love simply for love's sake. That's what it's about. And in doing so, we bring glory to what? To ourselves or to God? No, to God. My brothers and my sisters, this week is a great example and a wonderful challenge. If you really love somebody, be willing to step out of your comfort zone. If you really love somebody, be willing to serve. If you really love God, do everything and anything in your power to bring glory to Him. And in doing so, the others who see you won't just love you. More importantly, they'll love Him.